Hello, all. Dr. Kimball here at CarePoint Neurosurgery. I just wanted to start going through some cases really to help you not only understand some more about imaging, but also to get a little better feel for the common presentations in the spine. Maybe these are some symptoms that you're having. Uh, I answer these questions for patients every single day, and I thought it might be helpful for you. So I'm going to uh, click over to here. These are some images of a lumbar spine MRI scan. This patient has got, uh, as you can see right here, there's something kind of crazy going on. He's got a slip vertebrae, we call that spondylolisthesis. You also see these little uh, kind of round, whitish things. That's a synovial cyst. When I see a synovial cyst, we see uh, that typically show up when a patient is having some uh, instability or micro instability, meaning the bone is actually slipping. The cyst arises from the joint in the back of the spine called the facet. You can see these facets have a bunch of fluid in them. That's another signal that there's some slippage going on. Here's that midline synovial cyst that correlates to this region right here. All of those things together, uh, as well as the generation collapse of this disc and the slip, are contributing to some pretty significant stenosis. So um, what symptoms would this patient be having? Uh, leg pain when standing upright, walking, usually feeling better when sitting down or bending over, leaning on a golf uh, grocery cart. Uh, those are some pretty typical symptoms. Interestingly, this patient has uh, some stenosis at the level above. So here's the L3-4 segment, and you can see that the nerves are quite narrow there as well. The joints aren't as bad nearly as they are at the L4-5 level, and there's no cyst here, but he's got stenosis there as well, which I would definitely recommend addressing at the time of surgery. So if we keep crawling up, and you can see this cross-sectional line correlates to this segment here, um, come up to these other levels. There's a mild uh, amount of narrowing at L2-3, nothing that I'm really concerned about, but um, this is good to note. At this segment, which is right in between the discs, the spinal canal is totally open. Uh, these little dots correlate to these lines over here on the right. Those are free-floating nerve roots in a, in a pool of water or spinal fluid. Everything's fine there, but you can, it, it really helps to understand what's normal and what's not. So there's some narrowing right here at this disc, and again down here at the 4-5 segment, we've got all this stuff going on really pathologic generated discs. Now this kind of problem is not going to get better with um, uh, ablations or injections. There's an actual instability. Now this patient had some questions for me. He's uh, 67 years old. He's quite active. He golfs. He wants to keep getting around. His main question for me is, well, um, is this something that I can put off? Is this something that if I put it off longer and longer that I'm all of a sudden going to cause some irreparable damage. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, there's a lot of surgeons out there that will tell you, yes, listen, if you don't do this, you know, at some point you're going to have problems with your leg function. You could go paraparetic or you could, which means you can't move your legs uh, or you might lose bladder continence. I think, you know, I've been doing this for many years, although I look quite young. I've been doing neurosurgery for over 15 years now. That is just an unrealistic thing to happen, more than likely, more common than not. When you start developing problems around stenosis in the lumbar spine, your typical symptoms are really slow or insidious onset. Rarely, it'd be extremely unusual to develop an acute onset of uh, bladder incontinence or something like that. More likely than not, you're going to have a lot of symptoms that precurse that, aching down the legs, pain down one leg or the other, difficulty, uh, feeling of uh, uh, tightness. Um, really tired legs, they might feel like they're going to give out on you when you're standing upright for long periods of time. All those things are going to kind of push you down the road of, hey, this is something really that uh, I need to, to get fixed. So um, without belaboring the point, it's extremely rare that a condition in the lumbar spine becomes an acute situation where you get permanent nerve damage. So try to take that off your list. I don't ever want my patients to be you know, scared into surgery. This is a thoughtful process. You need to decide, hey, this is this the right thing for me? Do I need to get surgery? How is it affecting my life? Is it going to change my life if I make this change and, uh, you know, fix the problem? Am I going to be more functional? Am I going to have less pain? Am I going to continue to be able to live my life? Or am I just kicking this down the road and then I'm going to have to fix this when I'm 75, which I would prefer not to do? One, you waste many years of functionality. Two, you might be in a position where your health isn't so great to get it fixed at that point. Hope this has been helpful. I got a lot more of this stuff to come for you. If you have questions or, or cases, problems with your spine that you want to run by me, I'm happy to review your films. Uh, give you a second opinion. Just let me know.